Hello, my name is Favor Wusu. Today I'll be sharing with you the secret vitamin that lowers your risk of cardiovascular death. The Japanese are known to have one of the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease in the world. And this has been attributed to their very active lifestyle, their high consumption of fish, and the secret vitamin I'll be sharing with you today. So let's dive in. What exactly are cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases are a group of disorders that affect the heart and also the blood vessels. They are caused by a buildup of plaque in the blood vessels, leading to reduced blood flow or obstruction, blockages um, within the blood vessels. The reduced blood flow, there's reduced blood flow to the heart, there's reduced blood flow to the brain, and also to some other organs in the body. A very good example of um, cardiovascular disease is coronary artery disease. It occurs when the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart, they become narrowed or they become blocked, leading to heart attack, also known as angina, or um, um, leading, to, sorry, leading to chest pain, known as angina, and also heart attack. Cardiovascular diseases is a disease of global concern because of it's, it's one of the leading cause of death worldwide, as you can see on the screen. In the US, the Center for Disease Control um, said that it accounts for one in every four deaths. The British Heart Foundation also said they have a record of 170,000 deaths each year attributed to cardiovascular diseases. The WHO said the same thing, that it's a leading cause of deaths in Nigeria. And Statistics Canada also said that it's a second leading cause of death each year in Canada. So it's a, it's something to be, I mean, to be, it's very, very important that one considers what can be done to prevent it. There was um, a study that was carried out in Rotterdam. Rotterdam is uh, a place in the Netherlands. And the aim of the study was to um, find out the causes and the risk factors of um, cardiovascular diseases among the elderly. And the goal of um, the study was to find out how to improve prevention and treatment strategies so the the uh, study involves um, thousands of people aged between um, 45 years and older, both men and women, and they were um, it's, they were they, they, they were the study was around took about eight years, and at the end of the eight years, certain findings were you know certain conclusions were made, and this this is a summary of some of the conclusions that were made as regards um, what was observed and the cardiovascular health of the people. Number one is that there's a strong link between the silent arterial calcification and increased risk for cardiovascular events, which suggests that there's need for preventive action. There is this, there's a great link between arterial calcification and cardiovascular events. And so, this is something that can be prevented and um, it's um, the, the, the important thing to note here is that it's the, the link between arterial calcification and cardiovascular events is a very strong one and so it must be taken very seriously. Arterial calcification must be prevented by all means. That is one of the findings of uh, the study. The second one is the role that a protein that is produced by the smooth muscle cells in the vessels, known as the matrix GLA proteins, the role it plays in inhibiting uh, calcification in the blood vessels. So the research points to a pivotal role for the matrix GLA protein, one of the strongest natural inhibitors of vascular calcification in preventing calcification. In every blood vessel. Our blood vessel cells secrete the matrix jelly protein, which helps prevent vascular calcification. But it cannot 
<laughs> the calcification cannot be prevented if a particular vitamin is lacking either in our diet or in, our, or in supplementation. And that vitamin is found to be vitamin K2, also known as menaquinone or MK7. It's found to be a key factor for the activation of the matrix GLA protein. However, uh, vitamin K2 deficiencies are very common. They also found out that a lot of people do not have um, vitamin K2. Um, they have vitamin K2 deficiencies. But those who have low levels, low incidence of arterial calcifications where they had high levels of, um, they, they weren't deficient in vitamin K2 and they were they were consuming food sources of uh, vitamin K2. So it actually protected them from having um, arterial calcification. And so they also said, uh, newer research suggests that the intake of vitamin K2 in dietary supplement doses will increase MGP activation and contributes to prevention of calcification of heart and blood vessels in healthy people. So this, the old results is pointing to the strong link between um, prevention of arterial calcification and heart calcification by the intake of vitamin K2. That is the summary of the study. The more K2 in your diet, the less arterial calcification, the less incidence of cardiovascular events, which is a leading cause of death. So when you take vitamin K2, also known as MK7, the matrix GLA protein in your blood vessels are activated, and this leads to no calcification in your blood vessels. Here is a clean blood vessels. And when this happens, you have low level, your blood pressure is, is in good condition. You have healthy blood pressure levels. But when you don't have sufficient or you have deficiency of vitamin K2, the matrix GLA protein, even though it's present in your blood vessels, it's inactive. It cannot prevent the calcification of your vessel, of your blood vessels, the walls of your blood vessels. So here we have a case of um, arterial calcification, as you can see in the white deposits. This makes the arteries to be stiff and not just stiff. It also makes them to, um, to be less elastic and you have um, problems uh, with blood pressure control when the arteries are like this. So there is a synergistic um, relationship between the intake of vitamin K2 and vitamin D3. And also, the, it's, it's also found that um, you need to balance your calcium intake with this pair, vitamin D3 and K2. So as we, were, as we discussed earlier, the matrix GLA protein, as you can see here, in the presence of vitamin D3, the gene is is, is activated, the, the gene is, is, is put on, let me put it that way, the gene is put on and then the protein is activated in the presence of K2 and what happens is when it's activated, it mops up, it binds to calcium in your vessels, in your blood vessels and moves them out where they are not wanted. You have less, less calcium, you have less calcification in your blood vessels when you take D3 and K2 together. And for bone health, so they are, so what, what this uh, chart is talking about is basically the importance of vitamin D3, K2 and calcium as regards bone health and your blood vessels. So when it comes to your uh, bone health, in the presence of vitamin D3, Osteocalcin, which is a protein produced by osteoblast, the cells that helps with bone formation. So, in the presence of vitamin D3, the osteoblast is produced. I'm sorry, osteocalcin is produced, and in the presence of vitamin K2, it is activated. And when it's activated, calcium is moved to the bones. Calcium is moved to the bones, leading to higher bone mass density and lower fracture risk. So if you are taking a calcium supplement that doesn't have vitamin D3 and K2, it's very, very dangerous because the calcium you take will go to the wrong place 
it will not go to the bones where it is needed. So this talks about the synergistic role, why you must take, you must balance your calcium. If you are taking calcium for strong bones, it must be balanced, balanced with vitamin D3 and K2. What are the food sources of vitamin K2? Um, the first one here is um, netto. Netto is a form of, um, is fermented soybeans, very common with the Japanese and is uh, a popular um, food among the Japanese. And the important thing to also know is that vitamin K2 has two, the two most common sources of most, com the two most um, studied forms of vitamin K2 are the MK7 and the MK4. MK7 is found in fermented uh, products and the MK7 is, sorry, the MK7 is found in fermented products and the MK4 is found in animal sources. So, NATO has the highest source of um, MK7. MK7 is actually much more biologically active than um, MK4. So, if, if you are going for a source of K2, go for the ones that has, has the highest, higher, high, has higher levels of MK7 than the MK4. MK7 is much more active. Also, we have um, a product here, uh, which is another source of vitamin K2. It's uh, called, it's pronounced Hoida. Hoida. It's very common in Netherlands. In fact, it was invented there. No wonder why they, they, they had um, the Rotterdam study there and found the correlation between their levels of K2 and low, levels, low incidence of cardiovascular disease. So this hoida aged hard aged hard aged cheese is very popular in the Netherlands and is also a very good source of um, MK7. Also we have um, organ meats which are good sources of um, vitamin K2 particularly MK4. You have um, high levels of it in the liver and the kidneys of um, grass fed animals. And, the, and lastly here, we have um, fermented cod liver oil as another great source of vitamin K2. So if you are not able to get enough from your diet, or you don't have access to some of these sources, you can supplement, um, you can get a very pure and potent brand of um, a supplement that combines MK4 with MK7 and vitamin D3. There are very different brands. There are very, apart from this brand I'm on the screen, but just be careful that it's a pure and it's a potent brand. It's, that is very important. This is a brand that I actually um, recommend to a lot of my clients and I've had very good results. There was a case of a, a client of mine that did a bone density test and it showed that he had uh, low bone density and he was actually surprised because he's been consuming lots of calcium. He told me he's been consuming lots of calcium, a popular calcium from, you know, a um, network marketing company. So I told him to bring the calcium and let me see. And when I examined the calcium, there were no D3 and K2 wins. I said, that is why you still have low. The calcium was moving to the wrong place. It's not in your bones. So I changed his source of calcium. I gave him another product from this same company, which has the D3, the K2, and the other and the calcium with other cofactors. And after a month, he came back. The bone density has improved. I said, yes, now the calcium is is being moved to the right place. Because what happens is vitamin D3 actually helps to increase the absorption of calcium, but it's only vitamin K2 that moves calcium to the bones where it is needed. It moves calcium, the, it moves calcium to where it's supposed to be. So avoid calciums without this combination. It's very important. So if you have arterial calcification, maybe you're in your 50s or 60s, I would advise you to take um, two capsules of this product daily after food. Um, the MK7 here is 100 micrograms 
and um, the D3 here is uh, 5,000 IU. So if you are taking two capsules, you'll be having you'll be taking about 200 micrograms of the um, vitamin K2, which is very good. And also, um, but if you are just uh, maybe in your 30s and you want to, you don't have any cardiovascular disease, you don't have any, you are not, you, are, you don't have hypertension, you are, which is a risk factor, you can take this on a preventive, you know, on a, on a preventive, um, it can take a preventive dose. You take one capsule daily to prevent arterial calcification. So, in conclusion, arterial calcification is um, it begins in your 20 is a silent uh, thing that happens you don't know when it's happening but research says it actually begins in your 20s so it's good to take preventive measures early also take only calcium products that contains d3 k2 magnesium and other cofactors and um, also studies have concluded that when you consume more than 32 micrograms of vitamin k2 daily it leads to a 50 percent reduction in cardiovascular deaths and a 25 percent decrease in all cause mortality that means other causes of deaths so intake of vitamin d3 and k2 not only helps with cardiovascular uh, diseases it also helps with prevention of other kinds of other diseases including um, diabetes and cancer and so on and so forth so it's something to be taken um, seriously supplementation or consuming foods that are high in k2 for um, optimal health uh, these are references um, that you can check later on for more um, information the women's health study the women's initiative study actually is um, one of the studies that actually proves that when you take just um calcium and d3 alone it does not um uh, it doesn't improve bone health or reduce the risk of fa fractures among postmenopausal women this is one of the findings of the women's health initiative study which also you know uh, you know supports the fact that um vitamin k2 is very very important because in the study they found that women who were taking vitamin d supplements and calcium it had no effect on no positive effect on their bone health and um or reducing their risk of fractures so it's only when you add the k2 that makes the difference so that's part of the summary of this women's health initiative study so thank you so much for um, watching today's video. I would like you to please subscribe to this channel if you have um, learned something today. And uh, please remember to leave comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.